Well, good afternoon, everybody. Well done for remembering what day of the week it is. Never mind what hour of the day you are supposed to be in church. It is great to have your company this afternoon. We knew the way that Christmas fell with us gathering in church yesterday uh, in all three churches uh, yesterday morning that today would be a peculiar day. Uh, and, and well done for remembering that I'm coming to share our small afternoon uh, service. Uh, I wish I could tell you when the next service is, but apart from the fact that it's New Year's Eve sometime, I have no idea. So you'll have to look it up. I think we have a watch night service. I think that might be Friday. I'm looking at you all to nod at me. Is that, or Finn's nodding at me here, but he broke the stable in Bethlehem yesterday. <laughs> Thankfully, Jesus was out at the time or we would have had to rewrite the Bible and had a very different carol service. Uh, I don't know what we would have sung. You know, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie, would have taken on different tones because the organist had destroyed the stable and Jesus was no more. But thankfully, the baby Jesus is here, the stable's in ruins, and Finn is going to write a new carol with words that will fit. Uh, so we think, we think New Year's Eve is Friday. Uh, we think that we're gathering here for a watch night service. I think it's at 11 or half 11 at night. And uh, look, you can look it up on Facebook, in your magazines, uh, and, and if you see lights on in the hall, come in. That's a general rule. And then on Sunday coming, the first Sunday of January, we will be back to our normal timetable of services. That's 10 o'clock in Ballyclough and half past 11 here in St. Patrick's and in St. Columbus. And we would encourage you, please, to continue to, to book in. If anything, the, the rules as they are in our country and as they've been communicated just recently from our bishop uh, are to remain tight uh, with the renewed threat of this new variant of COVID-19. So please uh, do keep booking in, do keep our track and trace system active uh, so that we can keep one another safe. Just a page number in your prayer book. If you have a prayer book and a hymn book with you, uh, you'll be able to take part fully in our afternoon service. We are going to use the order of Compline to uh, navigate our time together in God's presence, and that's page 154 in your books of common prayer. That's page 154. And then just so that you are ready, our opening hymn uh, is hymn number 361. So you can also have a marker in that page too. Now as we prepare to worship, we take part together in the opening set of prayers uh, that begins the Compline service. And if you are able, please would you stand for this section of prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Brethren, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. 
the Lord's name be praised. We take up our hymn books now as we remain standing to sing the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. scripture readings and we're going to use the portion of Psalm 31 that you'll find on page 155 of your prayer books and we're going to remain seated as we read this psalm together beginning in thee O Lord have I put my trust in thee O Lord have I put my trust let me never be put to confusion Deliver me in thy righteousness, bow down thine ear to me, make haste to deliver me, and be thou my strong rock and house of defence, that thou mayst save me. For thou art my strong rock and my castle, be thou also my guide, and lead me for thy name's sake. Draw me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thy God of truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And then a second Bible reading uh, that we will find in the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn once more to our prayer books, page 157, and about halfway down that page, there are some wonderful verses of scripture. We're going to read the second two of the three scripture verses that are to be found in that section. So firstly from Matthew's Gospel, join me to read, Come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Then the next verse from Hebrews 18, again we read together, now the God of peace. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. We bow our heads to pray together for a moment. Lord, may my words and the thoughts in all our hearts and minds this Sunday afternoon be today and always acceptable in your sight, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, a very short thought this Sunday afternoon, and it's very interesting the way the same set of words can mean two different things depending on how they're spoken. Uh, so quite early this morning, uh, my wife said to me about church, and she said to me, you're not preaching, are you? Now, it wasn't so much the words as the way Cherith said those words that gave me pause for consideration. Uh, and I don't know whether yet I gave the right answer or not. Uh, but we have a wee thought to share with you called the unopened Christmas gift. I wonder if such a thing exists in any of our houses this Boxing Day afternoon. Did you get so many gifts yesterday? Uh, was your day so busy yesterday that you haven't had time to unwrap all your gifts? And when you get home later on today, uh, are there going to be gifts that you still need to unwrap around your Christmas tree? There's none of those in our house, and I'm pretty sure there are not many of those in any of your houses. Somewhere in Mr. Amazon land, there might be a few parcels floating about uh, that haven't been delivered yet. And you might have the joy of a couple of gifts arriving late in the post over the next week, but apart from that, I reckon nearly every present has been opened by now. But I wonder this Boxing Day, this Sunday afternoon, uh, about reflecting on the Christmas story as God's great gift. And I wonder in hearts and homes around the country, I wonder if that greatest gift of all has remained unopened or unwrapped. 
And there was a, a radio program on while I was driving in the week before Christmas that talked about uh, the most expensive gifts that you could give this Christmas. In Northern Ireland, it's reckoned the most expensive gift that you could give this year cost three million pounds. Uh, that's per year. And it's the gift of a plane with its crew and all its fuel and its insurance and its maintenance. And that is being sold from Newtonards Airport. And uh, if you would like to grab a late bargain uh, in, in the month of January, it will drop down to £2.7 million. Pounds. That is the, the most expensive gift anybody could find for sale in Northern Ireland this Christmas time. Did you get that? No? I'm stunned. We think about the gift of, of, of God, the gift that God gives. And you know, even when we compare it to the most astonishing gift that we can research and think about that is available for you and I to buy should we have the money. The gift that God offers, which remains unopened to many hearts and homes, it just puts it to shame. The gift that is spoken about uh, in terms of, of that baby who was born uh, and what that baby would grow up to achieve by God's will amongst humanity. God's most lavish gift to humanity and the greatest gift that we can give to one another will pale into insignificance. So it's astonishing that for so many, so many Christmases, that greatest of all gifts remains unopened. I suppose also we would say, uh, if we are following the thread of Scripture and the great readings that we read uh, through Scripture, uh, we could also describe the gift of God and Jesus as God's last gift. We always talk about the cross as being uh, the completed work of God. We talk about the impact of the death and resurrection of Jesus as providing satisfaction for the sins of the world. It is God's greatest and God's last gift. It's a great and moving story about a grandfather and a grandson. And the grandfather had promised his grandson a new car for Christmas. I can hear plots going on. And, and, and so this young chap who had passed his driving test could not wait for Christmas to come. Uh, and when he and his granda got together at Christmas time, uh, he could hardly stand still with excitement and his granda handed him a wee box, all beautifully wrapped. And he tore the paper off the box and his heart sank because he thought he was going to find a set of car keys. But instead he found a Bible in the box. And his granddad just looked at him with a steady gaze and said, Son, I'm giving you this great gift. And make sure you read the Christmas story in this Bible. You'll find it in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. And with, with really downcast steps, the grandson made his way back into his own life and his own home. And to be honest, he threw the Bible into a drawer in his bedroom and never looked at it for weeks and months until sadly about three months later, four months later, his granda passed away and the family gathered uh, and were at the funeral. And one of his older uncles came to him and said, well, how did you like your new car? And he just in a very quiet voice said, my granda didn't get me a car, he got me a Bible. And the uncle, with a funny look in his face, said, I hope you read the Christmas story in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, and just walked away. And the grandson started to get a funny feeling in his tummy. 
And as soon as the funeral was over, he rushed home, got the Bible out, and looked up Luke Gospel chapter 2, out popped a letter, a set of car keys, and instructions that a brand new car was waiting for him in the local car dealers, but he had to claim it within 90 days of the Bible being given to him. He missed it by three weeks. The gift was given. There were conditions to the gift. And sadly, that young grandson missed the loving gift that his grandfather really wanted to give him. Because he didn't follow through. And again, I wonder, with God's greatest gift, God's last gift, that needs to be received, needs to be believed in, needs to be sought after, needs to be made personal, needs to be brought into our lives and hearts in, in faith and prayer and discipline and self-control. How, how, how is there a danger in hearts and homes that we are missing God's last gift? Maybe putting putting it off for a better day. I wonder how many people have thought that. I know I need to sort myself out before my Creator, but I'll wait for a better time. I'll wait for a better moment. And the Bible always answers that question by saying, now is the time to receive salvation, to open God's great gift. So a lavish gift and a last gift and a lasting gift, finally. <laughs> Here's a question. How many Christmas presents that you received in Christmas 2020 do you still have? I would reckon 10% of them, if that. The rest have either been broken, eaten up, used up, given to a charity shop, or even worse, rewrapped and given to one of your other relatives this Christmas. There's a terrible uh, short-termism in a lot of the gifts we give to each other. Uh, we who buy them to give them to another person don't expect them to last. And those who receive gifts at Christmas time often don't uh, expect them to last. And I know that the Sloan family, I don't know if you've already been to the Fairhill Shopping Centre, have you Finn? It's closed. Well, if it wasn't closed, Finn would be at the Fairhill Shopping Centre for the Boxing Day sales to start because obviously nothing that any of his loving family was going to buy him would be any good at Christmas and he's going to trade it in uh, at all the shops, the Fairhill Shopping Centre, to buy himself something far more fashionable and trendy. Is that right? Don't agree, Finn. <laughs> You're digging yourself into a very deep hole by doing that. But we have that, we have that very short term termism uh, regarding the gifts that we, we, we get, the gifts that we buy. And it's wonderful to reflect lastly on God's lasting gift. Uh, it has more than a lifetime guarantee. It has an eternal guarantee. So friends, just a thought this afternoon. God has given us a gift. The most lavish gift. God has given us a gift that is his last gift. All that has been done in order to achieve salvation. And God has given us his lasting gift. And I guess our challenge, our reminder is to cherish the gift, open the gift, and use the gift every day we live. Amen. Turn back to our prayer books. The very bottom of page 157 and we will flick over and you'll find the words of our next hymn right at the top of page 158, so be prepared for that. And I would ask you all to please stand as we return to our order of compliment. Please stand, everybody, if you can.
Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thy God of truth. We sing the hymn before the ending of the day. with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. We sing together that lovely canticle, The Nunc Dumitus. with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. The Apostles Creed, I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. We join together in the prayer of confession. We confess. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins. Deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray together using the first two and the final prayer in the set of prayers that you'll find on page 161. So beginning, lighten our darkness. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit, we beseech thee. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place, and drive away all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace, and may thy blessing be upon us evermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and preserve us this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Take up our hymn books now to sing our final hymn, a very well known hymn, number 62 Abide with Me, Fast Falls the Eventide. Hymn number 62. We stand, if we can, to sing together.
Please be seated, everybody. May God give you his blessing and his peace, and thank you again for coming to our afternoon service. Uh, please do now remain seated until part of our uh, team, either Heather uh, or Hugo, come to you to indicate that it is your turn to leave church. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again uh, as our seasons become more regular, safe home, and uh, Finn will see you in the Fairhill Shopping Centre very shortly when you begin to exchange all your unwanted gifts. God bless you and safe home, everybody.